Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts back once again with another reaction. Today, guys, you're getting two Metallica reactions. The first one, which is this one, Metallica, The Day That Never Comes, Live 2017, Paris, France. Pretty excited to check out this performance. And a little bit later, the second video will be, of course, my reaction to the world premiere performance of Man Unkind by, of course, Metallica. Really excited to check out that live performance, that world premiere, because world premieres, for the most part, are really good, but we'll see what happens with Man Unkind. I'm, I'm excited, regardless. Um, I'm glad they're performing this song from time to time, The Day That Never Comes, because it felt like for a little while they were kind of distancing themselves from Death by Natic, and then all of a sudden randomly in 2017 they'll randomly play the song and then go away for a bit and then come back and play it again it's kind of strange but I'm glad they're doing it because the last time they played this before the 2017 tours and stuff was in 2015 and then it was kind of like okay let's just get away I don't know why but I'm hoping they bring some more stuff out from Death by Natic, but without further ado let's get into it now Metallica the day that never comes live 2017 Paris France let's get into it and see how they do with this let's go and you guys know this is not my reaction to the song. I've heard the song a million times. It's just the performance. The hell? Wait, is this like a live intro they put in? Interesting. They have a intro tape per se for the day that never comes. It's actually pretty smart because let's say hypothetically this was on Death Magnetic before the day that never comes, like they had this intro in place. People would instantly know what the song is, but the fact that it's kind of like this, oh, I heard the intro a little bit there. It's still going. But it's like the slow buildup. It's like, what is it? Well, the day that never comes. Still going. Well, they're screaming, so I guess they must see somebody on stage. I can't tell if this is like that. Yeah, the camera's not in focus. So I was wondering, like, is that meant to be that way? James, did you play that wrong? Oh. He's playing a little bit different. Oh, wow. The crowd. I don't know if it's the headphones, but Jesus, the drum sound is massive. Also the bass too. Yeah, the bass too. bass sound pretty good I felt I fell more in love with the song when I heard it live in 2009 when I went to the the first show of the, the, the first show that I went to the seeing them English <laughs> when I saw them in 2009 the first time I felt more love with the song that's what I meant to say she sounds really good the drums sound really good I don't know if it's the headphones or what but it sounds it all sounds good oh wow that bass Gotta get that snare roll in there. <laughs> it's on the record, I know, but still. Lars really depended on that snare roll in Death and Attic. I'm glad he kind of veered away a little bit from that. A little bit uh, in Hardwired, but it's still, that snare roll is like the thing he always goes to. Still like his drum, uh, 
his drum color, that shiny purple, it's different. And that's a classic James guitar. I think he's had that guitar like for years. Probably not the same one, but like the design. I'm waiting for the heavy part, you know? I'm waiting for that building up. Uh, okay, that note sounded kind of off to me a little bit, but let it pass. <laughs> you know, hearing this again, like, it's a really good performance so far, and it's making me really appreciate the song more. Yeah, I might have to go back and listen to the song a couple more times. It's been a little bit since I've heard it, but I'm, the song's been, all the songs have been so ingrained in my head for the most part that I can't forget them really. Sounds horrible. I don't give a fuck. Here we go. Turn this bitch up. Let's go. Let's go. Turn this bitch up. Let's go, fuckers. Oh, that's kind of cool. The boxes up there. Oh, that's fucking weird. so easy. <laughs> James. Bow, 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 bow. Uh, uh, nice. Bow, bow, bow. It's like, a, it's, like, it's like a fucking explosion when they get to this part right here. Here we go. They make it look so fucking easy. I could never do this. <laughs> Solo time. Oh, that's sweat. Oh, that's, that came at the screen. <laughs> nice. I like that camera angle. Seems the right, the right hand of death, basically. God damn. For the most part, pretty good solo. I mean, there's a little sometimes he was a little off a little bit because you gotta keep up. That's a cool angle to see him, like, just seeing him play. So fucking cool. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 I'm getting it to him. Sorry, guys. Here we go. I remember when they were playing this, like, more often during the, the World Magnetic Tour. That ending, that snare roll. Lars sometimes to kind of cheat a little bit and kind of not play it as fast. It was okay. Oh, I 
man. I'm kind of right there. I'm going to get you. All right. Now, uh, we got to be honest here. A lot of people, when they first heard the song, I think, I think this was the first single. Of, no, I think Cyanide might have been the first single. Or was it Day That Never Comes? I think The Day That Never Comes was the first single. Regardless, when this song came out, everyone, either whether you're a Metallica fan or not, everyone compared it to Fade to Black, uh, Welcome Home Sanitarium, and One. That's what it was compared to because it's the ballad of the record, basically. Um, and the same, the structure of those three previous songs is the exact same structure for the most part for this. The difference was for The Day That Never Comes is that there's a lot more variety of sections where one kind of has the same structure at the end, but it has like, you know, the main solo and then harmonizing solo and then Welcome Home Sanitarium. A little bit kind of like this where there's different sections and Fade to Black has the same kind of ending basically. They're all epic. They're all epic songs. The Day That Never Comes, I, I understand that comparison, but I really dig the song. Like, I started, I, I started like, re-loving the song again. Like, I've heard the song for years now. I've heard the song since 2008, and I can still enjoy the song. I think that's a good thing, if I can still enjoy it. This was a pretty good performance. There was one part, and you saw the reaction. There was one moment, I, it, it sounded like James hit a note that just didn't sound right. But the most part, it sounded good, his vocal-wise. Because James Hetfield, nowadays, it's kind of a hit and miss on certain songs. And I and I will say that he is my idol. Since, since I was 13 years old, James Hetfield has been my idol. And I will even say there are some days and some shows he's just not on his A-game. And that's okay. We're all human. And he has been performing nonstop forever, basically. So I will give him a pass for the most part for stuff because... He's still going out there and doing it. He's doing it for the fans. So, can't really complain about that. Uh, the only real part that I kind of noticed a real hiccup was the solo. And that's just because it's a very fast-paced solo. And they're playing The Day That Never Comes a little bit faster than normal off the record. And, they, and they've, been, they've performed the song a couple of times in the past couple of weeks or so. But it's still probably not ingrained in their brain where they can get everything done. I mean... Look, Kirk, he pl like he sometimes har uh, har not harmonizes. He sometimes improvises. That's the word. His solos a little bit. But at the end of the day, I mean, that solo overall came out pretty good. I mean, it sounded like the solo off the record. Sometimes he was ahead. Sometimes he was a little bit behind and when we were transitioning to different parts of the solo. But that's okay. He still ultimately did, I think, a pretty good job. The sound was great. I'm not sure if it was the headphones or not, but man, it, it sounded a really good. It sounded really good through the headphones. I might re-listen to this with just the computer speakers and see how it comes out that way, if it sounds any, if it sounds the same or what. I, it might be the headphones though, but it sounded really good. Like, I think that's a good thing because like, you listen to stuff mostly with headphones in your ears or like this, instead of in your ears, you have them, you know, slammed against your ears. If the music sounds good that way, then that's a good thing. I think at the end of the day, that's fine. Um, but yeah, good performance. I'm glad I checked this out. I'm glad I reacted to it to see how they did. And I thought they did pretty damn good. I, I, I'm i really digging the song more now. I got to go back and listen to it a couple more times. So uh, there you have it, guys. That's my reaction to the live performance of The Day That Never Comes 2017, Paris, France. Let me know in the comment section below, guys. What are your thoughts about this song in general, this live performance? Whatever thoughts you have, let me know in the comment section below, guys. Thank you so much for watching my reaction. 